My mom had me nine days after her 17th birthday. My dad was 19. They were not and have never been in a relationship. My mom eventually started dating another guy who she got engaged to when she was 19. He sadly committed unalived a week before they were supposed to get married. This obviously had an emotional toll on my mother and kicked off a 16-year addiction to pills and IV drugs. My grandparents, her mom and dad, legally adopted me when I was two and raised me as their own. They are both insanely good people. Words aren't enough to express everything they did for me and how much I love and adore them. Mom was very in and out of the picture, would disappear for months at a time, randomly show up to my grandparents to visit me, when in reality she was asking them for money or something else she needed, then would disappear again. In and out of jail, married four times, all to very hurtful men, all the works. I'm happy to say she did eventually overcome her addiction and has gotten a master's degree and is working on her doctorate. She's an addictions counselor now. We have mended our relationship and speak every day, though I travel for work, so seeing each other in person is more difficult. My dad has never had much to do with me. I met him for the first time when I was in third grade when my mom went behind my grandparents' back and took me to his house. I've never seen him again. When I was about 16 or 17, I found him and was able to obtain his phone number. We did text occasionally back and forth until I was 21. It was mostly me reaching out, and we never talked about anything personal. I tried to get to know him, asked him to go to lunch, invited him to my high school graduation, etc., and he always had an excuse. We never met in person. I invited him to my college graduation, which he said he would come to. The day before, I asked him if he was still coming, and he blew up on me. He told me he wasn't coming, he didn't consider me his daughter, etc. I blocked him and haven't spoken to him since. Obviously, we had a very surface-level relationship. If I saw him in a crowded room, I would have no idea who he was. He's a stranger to me. He has two other sons by another woman he was with, who he actually raised. Fast forward to a month ago. My mom leaves her current husband, who was also incredibly physically and mentally hurtful. She has been with him for 14 years. She's left him multiple times before, but always goes back. This time she seemed to be sticking to it. She moved back to our hometown. Her and my stepdad moved to Florida when I was 18 and got a job. She eventually ends up telling me she's living with and having a full-on relationship with my biological dad. She asked me to not tell my grandparents yet. A couple of days ago, she ends up telling them. Neither are very happy about it, obviously. My grandpa really despises this man. He's had to see the emotional fallout over the years he's caused me and wants nothing to do with him. My grandma didn't seem happy either, but my mom told me she's went over there and visited with him and his sons. My dad's son just had a baby and she wanted to visit with him. My mom is adamant that she loves him and always has and always will, which is coming out of left field for me. She's always shit-talked him into the ground in the past, and like I said before, they never dated as far as I'm aware. She's been shoving him down my throat lately, always talking about how great he is, telling me I need to message him and talk to him, how he's sorry for not being in my life, how they've both talked about how bad they were to me and how they're full of regret. I feel like a terrible person for being upset about it. I'm so glad my mom is getting away from my stepdad. I'm so thankful she made it out alive and seems to be happy. I feel extremely betrayed though. Out of the billions of people on this planet, she goes to that jerk. I feel kind of betrayed by my grandma too. She lied to me about seeing him, which isn't normal for her. I don't understand why everyone is being so accepting, minus my granddad. I feel bad for it, but I can't help to feel pissed off and hurt. Sorry for the lengthy post. Thanks for listening. Now for a few comments. One commenter said, out of the billions of people on this planet, she goes to that jerk? I swear I had the same literal thought verbatim as I was reading your story. So, I feel we are kindred spirits. You have a solid perspective and seem to understand what's going on around you and you didn't actually ask for any advice. So I'll just say that I understand why you'd feel the way you do. Without telling you, you need to feel any particular way because you don't. I will only say, allow yourself room to process this and even change how you feel over time. You very well may not and I'm not even suggesting you need to, only that you give yourself the room and permission to do it. In the meantime, you should set boundaries. Initially, you can use the time to process as an excuse to buy time, but since it seems like you're about to have to start playing defense, you might want to prepare. An example would be, Mom, I really don't know what to think about what you're doing, but I do know this. If you try to force, persuade, or even suggest that I should just drop it all and be a family, I will block you. Nobody gets to decide how I feel or when I should feel it. I'm not okay and I do not know when I will be. Frick with me at your own risk from here. Another commenter added, Your mom got a PhD in something she is terrible at. Who the frick is she gonna counsel when her life is royally fricked up? Your dad told you where you stand. 
Don't let your mom's rose-colored glasses fool you. She has never lived without a man, and your sperm donor is just another notch in her belt. Now for the one-year update. I posted on this sub over a year ago about how my mother started dating my biological father after he had been absent from my life for 26 years. He has two other children he was around for. They ended up getting married this past June. My mom did try to force a relationship with him and his two kids on me prior to their marriage. I moved to the West Coast for work and decided to go no contact for a couple of months to think things through and determine how I really felt. In the midst of no contact, I found out they got married. I did talk to my mom and laid out all my feelings about her and the situation shortly after that. She basically gaslighted me and told me I need to forgive and forget. Needless to say, I no longer speak to her or have anything to do with any of them. I'm content with this decision. I realized I am much happier without her in my life, have much less stress and anxiety this way. Now for a comment. One commenter asked, you do what's best for you. How did they reunite? Did he ever say anything to you? I replied, I'm honestly not sure how they reunited. I'm assuming probably social media in some way. My mom did kind of force interactions upon us, but they were very awkward. Lots of small talk. Sometimes just totally ignoring the other one lol. My mom kept telling me he was too stubborn to apologize, so he was waiting on me to. I told her I didn't feel I had anything to apologize for. Now for a few comments. One commenter asked, why would you be expected to apologize to him? I'm still trying to figure that one out lol. Another commenter said, I'm sorry you were such a shitty father that you pretended I didn't exist. I'm sorry that you're too stupid to realize you had potential to have an awesome relationship with a great person and blew it, etc. and so on is the only way I'd apologize. Then another commenter added, I'm sorry you're getting back together with mom again. Y'all can both do better. But hey, you get what you deserve. I've thought about it, but neither of them are worth the breath it would take to utter those words. Another commenter said, What is there for you to apologize for? He abandoned you. You definitely are better off without them in your life. Someone else asked, what on earth are you supposed to apologize for? For being born and abandoned by him? Huh? I wish I knew, lol. Then another commenter shared, As a mom, I could never be with a man who abandoned his children, and definitely a hell no to a man who abandoned my own child. I'm sorry you had to experience this. Glad you chose you. Some of my friends who are parents said the same thing, which is when I realized I wasn't being overdramatic and had a real reason to be upset, lol. Thank you. It's a good feeling. I hope everyone in this thread chooses themselves every day. Am I the idiot for keeping the drum set I bought fair and square despite the pawn shop owner's meltdown? I went into a pawn shop with the intention of just looking. I found a set of drums that they had stacked up in a corner for sale. I asked the clerk how much they wanted for them. She was more interested in her phone. She barely acknowledged me and said, look at the tag on top. There was a single tag on the snare drum on top that read, dollar, 250 goes with the green drums. The drums I'm speaking of are green. Now I knew this was a great deal, frankly, the deal of a lifetime. So I asked, ma'am, are you sure? She kind of barked back and said, that's the price. Do you want it or not? I mentioned how great of a deal it was, and her only response was, great. I paid for it, took my receipt, loaded it up, and left. She was probably the rudest salesperson I'd ever met, but whatever. Tonight, I get a call from the owner. I don't know how they got my number, but my best guess is from my card, or from maybe something I had pawned years ago. But he was extremely insistent that I was in the wrong. He said, you need to bring that back. You knew they were worth more. You knew it, and you let her go with it. That was the price for just that one drum. This is true. I knew it was a stellar deal. I, however, did not try to do anything dishonest. I asked twice. She insisted on it, and even got me a platform cart so I could load them. I figured they were taking up a lot of space and maybe just wanted them gone. The snare drum even said, goes with the green drums. I wasn't trying to be dishonest. The receipt says, description, green drum set. The owner now says he intends to call the police, and possibly sue me, and I really don't want any trouble. I also don't want to return it because I genuinely feel like I didn't do anything wrong. The owner has called me about 50 times, and I finally blocked the number. It's been making me extremely anxious. The drum's value new is around $2,000. Should I return them? Should I get an attorney? Now for a few comments. Cybercrime said, an employee sold you an item. You have the receipt. You paid your money. Tough shoot owner. Don't do anything unless they do. He can yap all he wants. Recoverdance4945 added, Exactly. It's not the responsibility of the buyer to triple verify pricing. It's the shop's fault for not knowing their inventory, and at the end of the day, the owner's fault for not clearly marking the set. Village Idiot 1984 suggested, Block number. Never think about it again. He's not going to sue you. He's going to fire his cashier. Ruit522 female asked, If they call the police, wouldn't the police just pull the security camera footage showing what you describe? 
I replied. Yep, or at least I hoped that was the case. As it turns out, the police probably would have just laughed at how outrageously this was handled because I can't make a barcode on the fly or change barcodes in their system. The invoice shows the quantity and serials and the price for them in their system. The only thing that it shows that I did was pay the listed price for them. Wraith the Rogue shared. As someone who has been on the other side of this situation, screw the pawn shop owner. For my story, when my parents divorced, we were in a pretty bad spot financially. Mom took some guns to a pawn shop. One gun was worth upwards of 3K. The pawn shop gave her $90. Years later, I went back into that shop asking about that gun. The owner remembered it and knew he was getting an amazing deal. That is the nature of that business. So, good for you and your amazing drums. Rock on, man! Now for the update, a few hours later. After a slough of angry texts from about three different numbers, I believe he's starting to see my side of things. It's not a normal small paper receipt. It's a paid invoice on printer paper. It lists the make, model, color, quantity, six, and the individual serial numbers for each drum. It has the barcode, which she scanned and printed. The price came up as $250 plus VA sales taxes. It shows my payment method and my name and number I had listed with them, plus an old address. It also has the clerk's name. They have a few shops in the area. Apparently, I had purchased a firearm at one of their shops at one time because digging through my credit card statement using a search bar shows what I assume I paid for that firearm some time ago. I simply texted him a photo of the receipt and told him that I double-checked that the $250 was all she wanted for the drums. I reiterated by telling him that I even asked her to check her system because I was indeed interested in the drums. The owner apologized for going off on an angry tirade over a screw-up by one of his employees and that the employee made it out to be something that it wasn't because he was able to pull footage and audio of the incident and the transaction. My assumption is that she tried to lie or say I swindled her in some way to obtain the drums in order to cover herself. I really wasn't trying to screw anyone over. I drove the hour home with the drums and set them up, feeling elated that I finally got something I'd been wanting at a godsend price. He told me that he understood that I wouldn't be returning them and that he'd chalk it up to a trainable moment. It's still super weird to get a barrage of texts and calls essentially calling me a thief and a crook when it seems like it would be easier to first get the full story knowing you had footage and audio of the incident the entire time. I have a close friend that lives a few hours north of me that manages a competing pawn shop to this one. Apparently, this one is a chain. I showed him everything, and he just kind of laughed at it. He said they keep serial numbers of every single item in case something does pop as stolen, and they have to wait a certain amount of time before they can sell it to give the item time to come up on a hot sheet. This explains the release date that the drums were well past. He also told me that the broker was SOL and that his shop would have rather eaten the mistake than embarrass themselves by seeking out a customer that got an item for cheaper than they intended. He said it didn't matter if he thinks I knew better and that it's not my job to know. It shows in the system as that price and that's what I paid. Am I the idiot for feeling uncomfortable in my own home because of my boyfriend's troubled brother? My boyfriend's, male 26, little brother, male 11, creeps me out, but my boyfriend isn't taking it seriously. I don't know what to do. Hi, I'm not really sure how to handle this situation and would appreciate some advice. I, female 23, have been with my boyfriend, male 26, for almost three years and we live together. Recently, his parents were arrested and as a result, his little brother, male 11, has had to move in with us. I understand the situation is complicated and my boyfriend didn't really have a choice. Obviously, he couldn't just leave his brother with nowhere to go. The thing is, I find his little brother creepy and I feel horrible even saying that. I know he's a kid and he's gone through a traumatic experience, but some of the things he does make me really uncomfortable. For instance, he stares at me a lot, like almost all the time when we're in the same room. I'll catch him just watching me and it's unsettling. He also has this habit of walking into our bedroom without knocking especially when my boyfriend is out. I've told him multiple times that he needs to knock, but he either ignores it or just doesn't care. He will shower and use the bathroom with the door wide open, clearly so everyone can see him when walking past, even though I have told him he needs to keep the door closed when he's in there. One time, I had just gotten out of the shower and was in my towel when I walked into the bedroom, and he was just standing there, staring at me. I asked him what he was doing, and he didn't even answer, just kept staring before finally walking away. I brought this up to my boyfriend, but he brushed it off, saying his brother is probably just adjusting to everything and doesn't mean any harm. I lent him my laptop because he said he needed it for homework, and when I got it back, it was completely filled with corn. Like he had downloaded corn, it was in the search history. I told my boyfriend he needed to speak with him, 
but my boyfriend says it's normal for a boy his age. He just told me to clear the search history and delete what he downloaded. But he is not being normal. He is weirding me out, and I feel bad even saying it. I get that this kid is dealing with a lot. Losing his parents like that is traumatic. But at the same time, I feel like my feelings are being dismissed. My boyfriend says I'm overreacting, but I honestly feel really uncomfortable in my own home now. I even find myself avoiding being alone with his brother because it just feels weird. I don't know if I am overreacting, like I understand giving some leeway because of everything that's happened in his life, but he is really weirding me out. Any advice on how to handle this would be really appreciated. Now for a few important comments. One commenter suggested getting a lock for the door, getting the kid in therapy, and discussing boundaries and healthy relationships. They emphasized the need for grace during this adjustment period and suggested considering living separately for a while if necessary. Another commenter pointed out that the kid's behavior was beyond what should be addressed online and emphasized the importance of therapy. They warned about the potential future implications if the behavior isn't addressed. A different commenter stressed the urgency of getting the brother into therapy and expressed concern about the boyfriend dismissing the situation and the original poster's feelings. They suggested making it clear that everyone's mental health is important. Another commenter mentioned that the behaviors could indicate intimacy trauma or child abuse. They highlighted the importance of boundaries and the need for the boyfriend to act as a guardian. They advised reaching out to a child services agency for help. Now for the six week update. Hiya guys, I wanted to give you all an update on my post from about six weeks ago. Thank you all for sending me the love, advice, and well wishes. A lot of you pointed out that my boyfriend seemed to be overwhelmed and was just sticking his head in the sand. And honestly, yeah. I sat him down a little while after I posted here and we spoke about his brother and everything going on. And he just started crying to me. He has cried in front of me maybe twice before, so I knew he was really feeling it. He said he was really sorry for the way he'd been acting and that he was just feeling so stressed that he was just pushing everything down and away. He agreed that Avery's behaviors were unacceptable and I told him he needed to have a firm conversation with Avery about boundaries, or I just wouldn't be able to live with them much longer. Caleb said he would enforce a change of rules, and then he started like sobbing, went gray, and started hyperventilating. I was seriously concerned and confused about what was happening. He said he needed to tell me something. I was comforting him and trying to calm him down, and he told me. He was a victim of pretty extreme CSA from his dad, and he thought Avery probably was as well, which we later found out was true. I was really shocked at everything Caleb told me. That explained a lot, why Avery had no awareness of boundaries, why he was displaying these weirdly intimacy behaviors, why we had such low contact with his parents before all this. But I met his parents, met them multiple times. Yeah, we had low contact with them, but I met them. I had been to their house. They just seemed like normal people, nice people. They weren't creepy or scary or weird. Caleb had been hiding it for so many years and he felt so ashamed that he hadn't reported it sooner. He said, he was really hoping that the abuse hadn't also happened to Avery, and so I think he was trying so hard to ignore any signs that he had. He said he felt responsible because he never reported his dad, which meant the abuse could continue. But I told him none of this was his fault. He has no blame in him being abused or Avery being abused. We sought advice on what to do. We reported what Caleb had said to the police and to social services. Both Avery and Caleb were interviewed, but we haven't heard much back from the police about anything that might happen next. They said it could be a long process if they managed to bring any charges at all. Social services started giving us some more support. Avery has been behaving a lot better since. He's been listening to boundaries more. He's actually changed a lot in the short time since I posted here last. He's come out a bit more as a pretty charming and charismatic boy. Even though, if I'm totally honest, he's still a little weird. But maybe that's to be expected after having the life he had. I got him into scouts and he's made a pack of really close friends who have even come over a few times. He's been getting on well with school, although they said he's only on KS1 level work, but I'm sure he'll catch up in time. And even if not, it's not the end of the world. 